This is a community meeting for a couple of sidewalk projects in the city of Fort Worth. And Chad, do you want to say anything or want to introduce anybody that's on here before we get started? Sorry, I was muted. No, I don't. I don't. No, I don't need to do that. But you go ahead and introduce yourself and the engineering team, and um, go ahead with the presentation. I don't think anyone is here from the council members' office. Sometimes they like to speak or say hi to the um, attendees at, at these meetings, but I don't see anyone on the call. Is there anyone here from a council from the council members' office? I don't think so. So you can go ahead, David. Well, I'm David Kansnick, project manager. Um, City of Fort Worth, Capital Delivery Division, working in the, um, the mobility group for, for the sidewalk project. And Amber, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure. Good evening, everyone. My name is Amber Christensen with Kinley Horn and Associates, the design consultant for this project. And Mark? Yeah, I'm Mark Mathis, Gannett Fleming, Trans Systems. I'm the project manager on the Barry and Seminary Railroad Crossing. Thank you. Anybody else want to say anything or? This is sidewalk improvements. We've got pedestrian to improve pedestrian safety at two and grade crossings. And this first project is campus drive and seminary drive. And if you can see the picture on your screen there and in the upper left, there's one we built a few years back across uh, the railroad tracks here at campus. This is to do the other side. And then there's the OD Wyatt High School down there at the, the bottom of the screen. And this came from the, the schools. It's, it's where um, our group, why this is being done. And walking out there, you see a lot of, especially along seminary, a lot of people walk where there are not sidewalks. And this is to fill in the gaps all the way from campus down to the end of the city limits. And the other way on campus from seminary over to 287. So. Some of those sidewalks exist, but what does not exist on seminary is the, the river crossings. So the project limits, we've got about on campus drive, 350 feet in seminary, the north side about 500, about a thousand feet on the south side. This is a six foot concrete sidewalk, which is not necessarily what's out there, but that's the current standard I would put along a, uh, Arterial Street for a recent council action. So, and we've got existing at rate ra railroad crossings. So we're gonna put the sidewalk at grade. This includes sidewalks, driveway signing, paper markings. So, and we are working through the railroad agreements. The um, the the design drawings are done. Unless we get comments from the railroad, construction start we would anticipate uh, February of next year, and end in August. Existing conditions. Picture there on the right from Seminary Drive, looking north towards the high school and then looking south away from it. And you see what's out there and, and there's a well-worn path where people walk there. And the other picture is the campus drive and you, this is the sidewalk that's the gap that's not complete in there. The other side is complete over the track, so. And we've got Detailed pictures here with lots of stuff going on, but the colorful. And this one's unusual in the seminary because of the, the skew of the street and the railroad tracks. Um, we're going to cross it a little different angle. So campus is a right angle crossing. Anybody have any questions? Well, that was a great presentation. That gives me some more clarity on what's going to be happening 
um, for the sidewalk. I am really glad y'all are doing this because um, like you said, there's a lot of people who are walking. Uh, my students, for example, uh, people who live in the area, we have a, a large population of um, people who have just immigrated um, to our area and don't necessarily have cars. So walking is really important. So I'm really glad that y'all are making the sidewalks here. I'm glad I got to learn more about it. David, is, is this one of the sidewalks where we intended to sort of break out pieces outside of the railroad right of way and build some and, and then build some within the right of way, or is this not? This one is not. The next one is. Okay. So <laughs> basically this whole, I just wanted to make sure that we explained to Sydney and, and Ryan um, to the attendees of this meeting that we cannot be, we cannot begin construction of this sidewalk until we get a, an agreement with the railroad, because a lot of the work happens within the railroad right of way. Um, the railroad has to install new panels. We have to be able to, um, put, um, new sidewalk inside the railroad right of way. And we have to get an agreement with the railroad before we do that. We have to execute a contract with them and um, pay them to do some of that work. And unfortunately, um, railroad agreements have taken a while to execute lately, and they've often delayed our projects. So we're working hard on this railroad agreement. And again, the construction start is anticipated to be February. David, are we making any progress with that? Or can you give us sort of the status about the railroad agreement? Or do you have any details you can offer about it? Amber, if you want to chime in, I know you sent stuff. As far as I know, Brooke Johnson is happy and has sent the stuff to Omaha. Um, and it may be three months before we get an answer back from them. Anything that you want to say, Amber? Yeah, no, I think you hit everything, David. We're just actively staying in coordination with the railroad to make sure that, you know, we don't kind of fall off to the wayside. So we're being proactive in that approach. Um, but as far as anything on our end, everything is sent over to Union Pacific and is pending with Omaha right now. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure Sydney's aware that we're ready to go. We want to build this project as soon as we can. But some of our projects are dependent upon external organizations, and in this case, it's the Union Pacific Railroad, and we will not be allowed to go out and start work on this project until we um, get that contract executed with them. So we're going to stay on top of it. We really want to build this project. We understand its importance, just like what you were talking about. And as soon as we get that, we'll be out there building it. Thank you for uh, explaining that. That does give me some insight. Um, <clears throat> Yes, I, I do see it as a very valuable asset to our, to the community there. Um, just because, you know, my commute every day, I'm like, oh gosh, these people are riding their bikes in the side, on the, sorry, in the road. And I know that people do that in other cities and countries, but like Texans aren't necessarily used to it and they're not necessarily following the rules and stuff. And it just feels unsafe. So I want, Again, I support this sidewalk being built. It will be a lot better for like, I see like a mother that like commutes her children on her um, bike with like a little trailer. Pretty much I see her almost every day. And then again, just all the walking, um, just pedestrians that just may not have car transport. Also, you guys probably know this, but they have the, um, the buses, the city buses come by and they drop off on the other side of the tracks. Um, so then the there's a lot of walking there. So again, it's gonna be good if you if you can get the railroads to cooperate. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. We appreciate it. They, they, they've been they've been working with us, they just don't work fast. <laughs> so. I, I did have uh I had a question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Um, Cindy, I'm glad you brought up the, uh, you know, all the people walking and biking. I, I live just up the road uh, as well, just on the other side of the tracks. Um, and I wanted to know, is there any plans to uh, kind of incorporate uh, biking infrastructure as well? Because I know, you know, your bikes can use the sidewalk, but if you've got a bunch of people biking or a bunch of people walking, they kind of get in each other's way. You know, is there any, any possibility of like maybe making it a little bigger to build an area for each or um, anything like that. I, I haven't really just now kind of tuning into this, so I'm not sure that any of the details here. So, so right now, the scope of the project is just for a sidewalk, six foot sidewalk, like David described. It's not a 10 foot wide shared use path. 
It's not any kind of bicycle facilities on the roadway. Right now it is, it, it is just a six foot wide concrete sidewalk. And the sidewalks we're okay. tying into, some are four feet, some are five feet that are existing out there, which would not really handle the, the bicycle traffic. Something that would. Yeah, sure. this is, yeah. This, yeah, this project's funded out of our sidewalk program and we're trying to fill in the gaps out there, like David described earlier, between the existing walks and, the, and especially across the railroads at these two locations. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've, I've definitely seen a lot of people, you know, having to walk just across the tracks. Uh, yeah, I saw one person in a uh, wheelchair trying to get across the tracks at the, uh, the uh, campus crossing. That was pretty difficult because there's not really any kind of infrastructure there. So, yeah, definitely any, any kind of infrastructure we can get in there to, you know, bridge those gaps is great. I do have another question regarding like traffic. As the construction's done, um, how long? Well, you said it would be from like February to August. Do you think that entire time there would be like um, the roads would be blocked and stuff like that? Oh no, the um, and it's hard to predict until I get the railroad agreement. But typically, we have to do some work. We have to stay off of their property. They're going to do work on their property, do track work, do crossings. So. They will be in, they'll be out, our contractor will be in. So um, it's going to be a lot of, because of the, of the different players, it's going to be a lot of start stop. We will coordinate that best we can. But the, uh, I don't know that this is going to have any road closures in terms of to the public. And right now the sidewalk is not there. So, I mean, I don't. Yeah, Amber, can you, can you help us um, answer that a little bit? It seems, it seems like there would be limited lane closures, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. In regards to the sidewalk, the lane closure should be minimal, either shoulders or just the far lane closest to the curb closure. So minimal impacts there. Um, as our construction drawings show right now, um, in coordination with the railroad, they have requested that the concrete panels um, for the actual roadway crossing itself be replaced. Um, and so that is a coordination effort going on with Union Pacific right now. But essentially, what that work entails is the Union Pacific maintenance vehicles will run along the rail line, lift up the rail line itself, pull out the panels, and then reset new panels in. So regarding the duration of that, they've assured us it's been rather quickly. Um, but to, to answer your question about road closures, that's the only real major closure we anticipate, but I don't think they would phase it to be a full, you know, full closure, both directions, anything like that. So, Amber, thanks for bringing that up. I think that's something we sort of forgot to mention. I personally forgot about that. We're um, the railroad wants to replace the, all of the panels across that entire crossing. Correct. Yeah. So, so, Sydney, we, we want to go out there and install this sidewalk along where we can definitely just see footpaths on the edge of the roadway. But um, in coordination with the railroad, we have to work with them. It's their right of way. They're, the railroad crossing panels out there are in bad shape and need replacement. And so sort of at, as part of our project, the railroad is going to replace that entire railroad crossing all the way across the road. So you are going to see a little bit more construction impact than just a sidewalk built behind the curb with this project. Yeah, uh, man, that that railroad crossings are like infamous to us at our school. Hey, to us too. <laughs> Y'all yes, see how it, it cuts us off on uh, campus and then it loops kind of to the other side. It's also on seminary. So we have so much trouble with students, teachers being late because they're stuck by the train. And so it's very infamous. So it will be even more so on <laughs> when they do this. That's but right, we understand, right. you know, not everything is about high school, um, but to, <laughs> to us it is. <laughs> Well, the, the railroads are infamous to us for other reasons, but we can, we can all talk about the railroads if you want. <laughs> we have Fortunately, unfortunately, they were there first. <laughs> yes, that's always the answer. And, and, and Chad, since you brought that up, they both are going the crossing all the way across that disagreement. Right now, the city and the railroad are discussing other locations where they want maintenance money. Which exactly, would not have yeah. come into play with a sidewalk only, but with a road crossing, it may or it may not yet. I don't know. It depends how they play this. Right. Right. I just wanted um, that's just I just wanted to make sure we mentioned that because we didn't describe it earlier. And I know Sydney's really looking forward to this project being built. 
and she's wondering <laughs> how it's going to affect her and her commute and her students. And that's an important part of it is you're going to see construction all the way across the road right there at the railroad and plus our sidewalk. And I will add to Sydney, sorry, I will add just real quick in regards to kind of the school peak times in regards to traffic control, working hours, things like that. Well, we really do our best to be diligent about avoiding those peak times um, just to have as minimal impact to y'all going to and from school as best we can. Thank you. Yes, that, that will be good. Okay, wow. we still have a whole nother location to talk about. Is that right, David? Sydney, <laughs> do you have any other questions or Ryan before we, we move on to the next location? No, thank you. No. Okay. No, that's all for me. Are you seeing the screen now? Yes, sir. Okay. Also talk about the pedestrian safety at the river crossings along East Barry and the seminary. And East Barry is and we're between um, we're east of I-35, uh, west of Riverside. The um, and this is the Union Pacific Railroad leased to Fort Worth and Western. And on Barry Street, the, the uh, this is uh, an arterial street that has some sidewalks, and this is to fill in the gaps out there. And then Seminary is the other crossing of the same track. We've got about 900 feet of new sidewalk on the north side of Barry, about 350 on the south, and about 100 feet on each side of Seminary. The uh, scope is to put a six foot concrete sidewalk across the existing Ant Grade Railroad crossings. And this includes the sidewalks, driveway signing pavements, and the ADA ramps. If the, if the one out there does not meet current standards, we will up update those. And this one also, the design drawings have been done for a while. This railroad agreement is pending. This one's a little ahead of the other one. Uh, we've got stuff sent to Omaha in July. So we're hoping to start in December of 2025. It'll be done in June of 2025. And, and this is the one Chad said, there's some work here we could break out and, and do some non-railroad work if we want to. So are those, is that date supposed to say 24? That is supposed to say 24. Okay. Perfect. Good catch. Yeah, good catch. <laughs> and then some pictures of existing conditions from left to right. You've got seminary looking south, looking north, and you see where the sidewalks stop and people walk across tracks. And I've seen people out there in wheelchairs and stuff. So it's like, and then Barry, you got south and the north, and you got the same deal. And I've seen people out there. So I mean, there looks like there's a need for both of these projects. And you've got the well-worn paths that somebody is walking through there now. And then the details of what that looks like in terms of the crossings. Anybody have any questions? But Mark, anything that you want to say or chime in on? Not really. It's just our railroad agreement has been in with Union Pacific since July, so we're really expecting approval any day. Normally, it takes them about three months, so we're hoping to get approval soon. Uh, we're also preparing the plans for the railroad work as well, the actual track work to be done. And because of this one, because it's UP owned and leased to Fort Worth and Western, we're going to do it. We have to do railroad agreements with both of them, and we've been talking with them. And Mark's got details uh, meeting with Fort Worth and Western. Since they are the lease, Eve, they will be doing the track work. And they've got stuff. The uh, they caught me off guard a little bit because when I thought I had one railroad, I would have done that in the railroad agreement. But because the agreements with UP as the owner, they don't want to do that for a lease railroad. So we're gonna we're doing the engineering work and send them to them. So. He's working on that now. Um, so things are coming together here. 
Anybody have any questions for us? Is it, um, is it also, um, can you, can you find it? What, what do you want? Just an overall map to show the location of these um, on Google. I don't know that I got anything handy to do that with. It was in the mailer. I know I can get a hold of that. That was actually something I was going to uh, bring up. Is uh, if it, if possible, it would be nice to have. Just like, you know, coordinates or linked Google Maps or something for these locations in the uh, Fort Worth like mailers that go out. Um, I, I saw the cross streets there, but there wasn't any kind of specific, like, even just like a you know, GPS coordinates I can throw into whatever mapping app I have. Be nice. The verbally that the, uh, this last project is the Everman crossing. It runs parallel to I 35. It runs down. In an industrial area, um, just, I don't know, 5, 10 blocks east of 35. The other one's over by um, business 287, the Mansfield subdivision. So, I mean, it, that's a through track. Uh, David, I think I can show it on Google Maps if I can share. Yeah, go ahead and you, do that. Go right ahead. Let's see if it allows me to do that. So our first location on Barry Street is right here. So to give you some bearing, this is 35. This is Cobb Park, Riverside. So it's it's a little north and west of the high school. And then we follow the track on down south. We're down here at Seminary right near 35. So this again is 35W Seminary. Um, you can see the other crossings are over this way. Mansfield okay, Highway perfect. Seminary, that, right? that helps. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to show the relation of each of the projects to those on the call. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and um, that was actually something I wanted to feedback. I wanted to get was that uh, it would be nice if we could have. Uh, either like GPS coordinates or like a link to Google Maps for all the locations in the uh, mailers that go out talking about these uh, meetings, just so it's a little easier to have an understanding of time what we're, we're going to be looking at. I know on the internal we have lats and longitudes. We've got maps go numbers, and if you go to the the City of Fort Worth uh, web page, and if you put these projects in, these have a project page that has, and I think it has that, or it has other information on there. Where they're at, work how to find them. We can we can talk to Laura, our um, communication specialist, who helps us prepare those mailers about about adding information like that to those mailers. Ryan, that's a good suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes we have longer projects. These are small, isolated areas. These are specific things. So. Um, yeah, I, I think I think even having like a link to the project page would be uh, a good way to kind of get that information out there. I don't know if that was in the mailer that was in the the invite we got had the the project pages in there. I'm not sure what you saw. I'm I'm uh, the one I'm looking at is the uh, like I just signed up for various different distribution lists through the Fort Worth website um, and the. It just says like sidewalk bond improvement, uh, Eastbury Street, East Seminary sidewalk, and it talks about like the meeting details, and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Does any um, does anyone else have any other questions oh. about the two projects? Um, okay. All right, Ryan, Sydney, thank you so much for attending the meeting tonight. We appreciate it. We outnumbered you. I'm so sorry. Sometimes we get a lot of um, attendance to these meetings and sometimes we don't, but we're really happy both of you joined us and David or um, Amber or Mark, do y'all have anything else? I think we might be done. 
I don't have anything other than that. Thank y'all for attending and we're excited to improve these sidewalk gaps. <laughs> All right. Everyone have a good night. Thanks, David. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Bye. Bye. I'm leaving.